So I intern at Milford Public Schools Digital Services, but who the heck am I? Uh, this is me, Gavin Keating. As you can see, a uh, beautiful picture of me. But I will be attending Gordon College this fall with plans to work in fields of Christian ministries and computer science. So a ve very interesting mix. How'd that happen? And then this is where I am, um, of course, interned, Parsons Government Building, specifically with the Milford Public Schools Digital Services. There's the IT people that just do everything around here, like swap Chromebooks. And then this is my site supervisor, uh, <laughs> Daniel Petrosky. This is this is what he looked like. This is what he looked like in a high school, freshman in high school, at Platt Tech. And he's our instruction, infrastructure, and operation services specialist. And once again, this is what he looks like now. So you can see the change he had over from being a freshman to now, a lot less hair, <laughs> but looks professional. Anyways, why did I choose this site? Because for like the entirety of the year, I was working with IT with the student help desk. And I was just more curious on like what field of computer science I wanted to go in, because like I was like, OK, I kind of want to, but I'm not too sure it was just dipping in just to see like what I could do. And uh, what do they do? Of course, they manage the technology around like the entire district, elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, the academy, just all of that, just making sure everything works as needed, and also Chromebooks. A lot of Chromebooks. And then expectations I have, basically what I was doing here, but around like every school. So just like managing, like going around, seeing them fix a smart board or a desktop, and also Chromebooks. A lot of emphasis on Chromebooks. That's like <laughs> half of their job is just managing these Chromebooks, which you would expect like it's a Chromebook. What could go wrong? A lot of things could go wrong with a Chromebook. <laughs> And responsibilities, I am, um, of course, as I expected, I was shadowing technicians at schools, specifically East Shore, Foreign, Calf Penn, and Live Oaks. For the majority of my time, like most of my time was spent at East Shore out of all of those schools. Then I was just learning how IT was functioning in those other schools, just like things that are like differences, like like the elementary schools, like elementary schoolers aren't breaking their stuff as much, but like at a middle school that has loaner Chromebooks, a lot can go wrong. Yeah, the middle schools are messy. Uh, a lot of interesting, I'm like explore like other specialties cause like they have like 13 people in the department and like all 13 of them like have like their own specialties. You have like Danny with like networking, blessing with, blessing with audio video, Connor with cybersecurity. So like anything I had curiosity about, I could just ask people. And then my favorite part, we're gonna talk about projects I completed. So this first one, this stack of laptops that looks like Shaggy Scooby-Doo sandwich. <laughs> um, the, these were eight HP 850 laptops that were not used. So the first day, I'm given five of them and say, image those, get like um, Lego Mindstorms on it. I'm like, all right, cool. Second day, I finish that up. And they're like, OK, you did those five. Now image all of them. You may be asking yourself, what is imaging? It's putting a new instance of an operating system, no matter which one it be, whether it be like Windows, Mac, Linux and just putting it on the computer going through like the whole process so I would have to turn on the computer boot it from a USB and have that USB install Windows 10 and then I had to do it a lot of times but like at the end of like like my first full week there I had those all image and then the donation project which was like preparing like 35 like older desktops for like donation so like I had to image all of them. Like the image station just had a 
bunch of desktops that look like the Great Wall in China, and like, just like having to image those, like, I was imaging like six, six to five at a time, because like, it was like imaging them and then updating them and then putting a couple freeware on it, and along with in imaging the desktops, we also had to um, grab proper square monitors from the lake. For those of you who don't know what the lake is, the lake is short for Simon Lake. I don't know if I'm allowed to say what happens in the lake, but I'm going to anyways. We can discuss it later with my supervisor. Um, the lake is where IT um, stores a lot of stuff, uh, mostly stuff that they don't want, which is why it's miles away from their office. But yeah. And then challenges, limitations. Of course, I'm still a student at law, and I'm working with a district I'm technically a student in, so they can't give me administrator, because just in case, God forbid, I want to just shut down the entire system because I'm admin. So it's like a couple of things, like I couldn't really like close a lot of tickets on my own because like I couldn't like access where like kids' rooms were for Chromebook swaps. I couldn't update like the I couldn't update the the grouping on Google Admin. Am I allowed to say what Google Admin is? I don't know, too bad. <laughs> I just like working with people I literally just met that, that was like part of the job. I had to meet like 10 people that I hadn't met before. And then like also just like there's people like I had probably like interacted with like once or twice before. And then all of a sudden I was going to East Shore with them and like doing a whole project with them. Then they're doing my resume. A lot of fun stuff. And just like also remaining confident, like one of my um, least favorite memories from this internship was that the first day we're at foreign, walk into a room with my supervisor, Danny, someone asks, oh, are you an intern? And my response is, uh, maybe. <laughs> just said, but that was the first day. I didn't have any mistakes like that from there on out, so. And then skills I developed more knowledge on specifically networking and like audio video, just like how that stuff works. I learned a lot of like how networking goes, what networking is, how network switches go, how you can crash um, a network. Yeah, and then just like a better work ethic and like more self-confidence, just like being able to be self-confident, like, okay, I know how to do this and I will do it. And then, how does this help me in my future? Uh, before this, I was not too sure about pursuing anything with computer science, but now I definitely want to pursue IT in the future, specifically in audio video, and just like resumes a little bit more improved as all my help desk and internship experiences have been written down on my resume now. And then future plans. I was offered a summer internship with them, but unfortunately I had to turn it down this summer because I have other things going on and other careers I'm trying to pursue as well. But I am not against interning with them another summer. So call me. <laughs> and then just like, yeah, that's all for that. Thanks. Do you have any any wonderful questions? Um, one thing's not going to quiz you. Um, <laughs> quiz me. I have, um, I, I have to say, this, this must have been a wonderful experience for you. So would you say that your um, your understanding of this future career has, has changed since doing this internship? It definitely has, because I also got to see, like, how the office works. Like, like I was only just seeing, like, one, like, there were a lot of days in like doing help desk at law where there would just not be a technician and I would just sit there for like two hours and be like, no one's showing up, what now? Yeah. Just just gonna uh, sit here. But now you have a better understanding. Yeah, because I have a better understanding of like what they're doing like in the background, what is going on, like more, po more knowledge on certain policies, buy the Chromebook insurance, please. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. I think I need this internship because I think it would help my job. So, um, Danny, I'm next. <laughs> <laughs> we joined the help desk.
other questions for these two? I feel like it would be, um, if Chromebooks didn't exist, I don't even think this opportunity would have ever been needed. Because, like, there would have been, because unless they did a laptop rollout, which, if they gave every student in the entire district, like, a laptop operating Windows, I, I, I can't even fathom how much of a mess that would be. Especially with how some of these Chromebooks are treated. <laughs> do you, what skills do you think um, transition from like that you learned in the help desk into your internship? I feel like a help desk built up like my common knowledge of how things work and like as time went on I became more familiar with how to fix the Chromebooks and also like while I wasn't doing a lot of desktop work with the help desk the desktop work I was doing was like expanding like my knowledge of it and like just knowing like certain things um, cause need more RAM. Mm -hmm. uh, blessing will quiz you, but I will. What does RAM stand for? RAM stands for Random Access Memory. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I'm Dan McCullough. I did an internship at Speed of Sound. It's a car shop. They do custom work. Enter at Speed of Sound Technologies. This is the place. It's a big garage. They have about four bays. And then back here, they have a fifth bay with a saw and for wood and all that. My site supervisors, uh, Milton was the main guy. He's the owner of the place. Nick, Timmy, and Andrew are the three workers, and that's all the workers there. Four people, not many. Um, the, the site specializes in uh, window tinting, automotive audio, automotive lighting, custom interior, automotive trim. So basically anything you want to do to your car, if you want to put some extra lights on it, if you want to put a new sound system in it, if you want to change the material of your interior. Um, I chose because I'm interested in cars, electrical work, and music. So I mean, just fits all the criteria of my interests, honestly. Uh, my ex expectations before doing this, I thought I wasn't going to be doing much uh, because everyone's experienced and I'm dealing with customers, so I didn't want to you know, mess up the customer's work. Um, and I expected not to be able to work up to their standards because all these people have years of experience in this. And I'm just an intern. I don't really have any experience doing cars. But this gave me some, so it's good. Uh, my responsibilities, uh, just cleaning the windows, cutting some of the tint, uh, wrapping wires, soldering them, like connecting them. So, put two wires together, you just solder them, melts the wires together. And wrapping sub boxes, as you see here, you take the sub. A lot of companies like to buy subs from this company. So, we make the wood, we cut it to size and put it together and wrap it in felt. I don't know if anyone has ever seen a sub before, but. Yeah, yeah, and, and now I, and now I have one. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like felt, and it's got the tube. Yep. So that's what we were doing. I, I was doing that simple. You can't really mess that up. And if you mess it up, you can just take it off and do it again. Uh, some of my challenges. Everyone in the place has experience, so like years and years of experience, and I'm just new. Um, so it's kind of hard to keep up with them, and oh, and not being qualified, which is basically the same thing. Um, and here's a picture of Tammy uh, doing a tint on a 5 Series BMW. See, she's spraying the soap in the back, doing everything. They, t they told me the whole process, but I never really got to do an actual tint job on a car because customer satisfaction. 
some skills I learned. Um, how to tint a car properly, wrapping wires, running wires like through body panels, uh, running wires from the front of the car to the back of the car, getting through from the, the firewall, which is basically where your steering column is. You gotta go through that, it's hard. Um, wrapping sub boxes, soldering, and tuning. It's a tuning sound, so it's the amp that you get um, matches your door speakers and doesn't sound like crap. Um, will this help me in the future? Yeah, it, it will help me in the future, but um, I am looking uh, for a profession in the electrical industry in the union, um, and I learned wiring safety, and I learned OSHA safety, a little bit of OSHA safety. Not a lot, though, not the whole complete list, but um, yeah, my future plans, again, is try to be a commercial electrician in the future through the union. It's local 488. This is the building I go to. I have an interview there soon to uh, become an electrician for them um, in the upcoming months, and they'll give me a job if I get in, which I hope I do. Um, again, I learned wiring safety, soldering, running wire, and wrapping wire, which all have to do with my future. So, I mean, it was kind of good that I can go to the place, I can look at cars, look at these cool cars, and then I can also learn um, some of the stuff, basic stuff that I'll be doing in the future. And here's one I actually did. It's a door speaker and a, another old 5 Series BMW. Just a simple door speaker, simple wiring, soldering, easy stuff. And I was not offered a job in the summer because I'm joining the union. Any questions? So I have a question. Yes. So how do you think this internship, so you talked about hard skills. Hard skills are very specific to your job. Yeah. So like soldering and that sort of thing. But what about like the soft skills? What did you learn about like, I don't know, running a business, showing up on time, work ethic? What are some things that you saw or that yeah. you yourself had to push? Yeah, on? so every every customer that they that they have, they, they literally explain to them, because it's a little pricey, the, the work. Yeah. So they literally explain to them like, this is gonna like we do everything up to like above everybody's like standards really. So we'll buy the products, we'll put them in right. We know how to do them. So I mean, and they explain it to every single customer. So just making sure the customer knows like what they're getting, and they don't really hide anything. So they'll have the, they can have the customer like come in and like watch what they're doing. And if the customer's concerned, they'll be like, okay, well you can come see this, and we'll show you how we do it. So if anything ever goes wrong, come right back. We'll fix it for you. The second time, no, they won't. Because yeah, the second, I mean, it, it yeah. would have to be their fault. Right. But, yeah, any, anything else? And so what inspired you to go into the electrical union? Um, My husband's an electrician. So he's interesting. got a huge system in his car, <laughs> and, he's, and he's an electrician. So I'm just feeling all of these things, you know, yeah. that are so similar. Yeah, I, I mean, I was kind of just looking for future careers. I'm not going to college. I'm going, I'm doing this. I get classes through the union. So, I mean, they're going to educate me from the bottom up on how to become an electrician. I just thought it was a good start. I can just kind of start over and start my career that I'm kind of going blindly into. Not really, but it seems like something that I'd really be interested in. I'm really good with intricate stuff and like kind of wiring, really, because I've wired a few things in the past. Thank you. Yeah. What is a sub? A sub, um, so music has like different EQs. There's high, mid, and low. So the high is like kind of the vocals in a song, the mid is the instrument, really basically, and then the, the sub is the low bass. When you hear like the bass like in a song, I don't know. Like when you, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give you any. Yeah, you're good. yeah, you're good, I was just getting clarification. Yeah, so they put the sub in the back and they just boost the bass like a, a ton and it's loud and obnoxious and people like it in their cars, like me. Yeah, coming down the street like <laughs> they got, they got yeah. Yeah, exactly. Anything else, anyone? Yes. Dan, I remember when you were looking for a site, and you had said um, you kind of got connected with Speed Ascent. Can you tell that story a little bit of how you like wound up there? Um, oh, well, my friend? Yeah. Yeah, my friend, actually, me and my friend Spencer tried to wire a radio into his car. Um, it's like a double den. It's like, uh, it's like a, basically a screen, like a touch screen for your car. And you're driving your touch screen like that into the dash. I did it on my car a while ago, but... In his car was a little different for some reason because he had a Toyota, I had, I had a Nissan, and we were trying to wire it, and the wire just started smoking. So we, there it goes. So we, and then they fried the fried the motherboard of his like whole like car basically. So we had to take it there, and they opened the door panel, they replaced the motherboard, 
and then they put the what the radio in themselves because they know how to do it and I didn't so then I was like hmm that's interesting I want to learn how to do this basically and then if he didn't if he hadn't gone there I wouldn't have even known about this place so thank God he did and great people and I'm really happy I met them so it's good Eliana after this internship if Spencer asked you to put it out radio you know yeah, I would. <laughs> I would now. <laughs> we, we, were, we were just taping, we were just wrapping the wires together and taping them. We weren't soldering them. So, I mean, now we can solder them. So now I know how to do that. So, yeah. Anything else? Anybody? All good? Yeah, great job. Thank you. So this is uh, my internship and what I did through the weeks. Who am I? My name is Chad. I'm a senior at Jonathan Law, and I played for the high school hockey team. And uh, I want to own a business of some kind in the future, just like anything. That's why I'm kind of doing this internship to figure out if I want to do like an HVAC, like some sort of trade, because, yeah. And then I interned at an HVAC company called Onofrio Home Comfort Systems, and it's pretty cool, you know. You HVAC, and then my site, my site supervisor wasn't just only Mark, but like it was like a ton. It was like the like the entire like like office. Like there's many people. Like I always worked with two guys, and they always like taught me stuff. So like there's too many to put on here. And then I chose this because I, I can eventually make my own business and make really good money and just be successful. I'm just trying to set myself up for anything in the future. And then what was the business on my site? The business was HVAC and cooling. I'd go inside houses, you know, attics, take take like units down, like the outside condensers, like fix those, see if like what the problem is and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. Well, my, my expectations were not what I thought it was. I thought it'd be like fairly easy and like, you know, you know, just, you know, put up a couple like pipe in stuff like that, but like not nah, those units, like <laughs> when, there would be like, there would be like holes in the ceiling and you'd have to carry this like this unit's like probably like this big and it's like metal and like there's a machinery and you gotta like lift it and it put a toll on my body for like a really long time like like a weekend like I was like I, like, I was dead you know I couldn't do anything it was like it was like I was going to the gym pretty much and I couldn't do anything but I got used to it after a while and I'm probably stronger now but yeah it was nothing what I thought uh, my responsibilities were kind of random they'd kind of go tell me like what to go do. It was never like a certain thing that I had to do every time like I went. It was always something different. It was whatever like they needed, like they'd tell me to go do something, I'd go do it. Or like someone would be there teaching me. So I kind of liked that. Uh, so my, one of my accomplishments were, I, uh, I was able to do one of these, and it was like real by, like by myself, and I found that really cool because like, you know, you gotta like put the, like the piping, you gotta like put it in, you gotta like drill in like the hiding, and you gotta like put the pipes in like, bend them and stuff like that and they like, put the covers on like, it was pretty cool and you pretty much make them go into there and I thought that was really cool a lot of my challenges were like just like keeping like time like wisely because like I, there's, I found myself a lot of the times just like standing around watching them because like I really don't do much and like so pretty much uh, that was like a really big challenge was just keeping myself busy and doing what I needed to do My the, my experience contributed to my intellectual growth. Uh, 
there was a lot of things that I had to like learn too, and that was teamwork, a lot of it. You know, to like lift heavy things, you need multiple guys like guiding and like, you know, like trusting people and just stuff like that. And like, there's a lot of like communication, communication, because there's a couple times because you got to air out like gas and like the systems and you can't start cutting pipe until like that gas is out. And like, you got to like relieve pressure and stuff like that. So you always got to be communicating what step they're on and like what step you're on. You got to mix it together. And... A lot of a lot of the times these things are planned ahead, but sometimes you run to like a pipe and you be like, oh, we gotta go around this. We can't do this. So you gotta like get like the home one. You gotta talk to them. Be like, we can't do what you, exactly what you wanted. There's a pipe here, and like, so you gotta like figure things out like as like, you go along. And like, I thought that was pretty cool. And my immediate future plans is uh, hopefully to continue doing the trade and then probably go to like Gateway or something to like get like a business degree so I can like own my own business when I get older and. Yeah, and uh, that's pretty much it. Any questions? I have questions. What's up? So I'm, as we just talked about, a huge proponent of the trades. So I'm, I'm curious. Um, first of all, I love your plan. Everything you did was, sounds amazing. I'm so proud that you knew that this was something you wanted to get into. But answer me this. Did you find that you had to use more, like, math? Than you thought at the beginning was there like measuring there, there is there is a lot of measuring like you really gotta like you gotta like calculate a lot of things because this this trade is more or less for preparation rather than like because you want to prepare like everything is all about preparation in this trade like you gotta get the measurements down like perfectly and like obviously you're gonna like cut piping still but like you gotta like you don't you don't want to underestimate something because then you gotta like add more and that creates more risk of like an air leak or stuff like that so it does take a lot of mask and uh, math and there's a lot of like calculations involved that I didn't learn personally but like depending on how many like there's like these things called like airheads and like pretty much like they go up like high up on your ceiling and like pretty much air comes out like heating and cooling so it's pretty cool and um you gotta like calculate like how many you have in the house how long like the the piping was and stuff like that it's like you know how much refrigerant you have to like put in the system so that was pretty That's big lot, yeah. right so it's probably more than what you had originally anticipated. There was more yeah. that goes into it, right? A lot more. Yeah, we just added a third zone in our house. Excuse me, fifth zone, because we didn't have a kitchen. And it was it was insane, like the amount of work and time that goes into these kinds of things. Um, and air conditioning units. So you, you started um, in May, but did you get to do any heating stuff? You probably focused a lot on AC, right? This now. was a very, like, it was a very, like, um, oh, what's the word, uh, think of the word it was you know I was constant like it was like a constant call for like air conditioning because like it was getting really hot out and like people were like it was really busy that's what it is it was like yeah. extremely busy and like it's so, like no one was really getting heat at the moment it was more or less you got to get this AC going it's getting hot we got to like get this fixed and no one wants to be on yeah. <laughs> but anyone else questions Chad do you feel like there were any classes you took here or any classroom experience you had that connected directly to the things you were doing or was this yeah, totally this was totally different. Yeah. Nothing in school. <laughs> I pretty much went in blind, and I was just like, "Oh wow, like, yeah. this is crazy." So, have you applied to trade schools, or have you started looking at them? I am. I am starting to like look because I definitely, if I do go into a trade, I want to get a license for it because you can get paid so much money. Like, because like there was a couple guys who didn't have their license there, okay. and they They're and they weren't getting paid as much as if someone did have their license. Like, they can be like the person without their license would be better, but they still won't get paid as much because they're not licensed. That's so. Correct. And that's in most jobs as well, yeah. right? Yeah. I think you have a wonderful plan ahead of you. And um, when you do start your own business, when you are looking into that, um, you know, the, the courses at Gateway are really wonderful. Mm -hmm. But you can also use, like, QuickBooks and learn those kinds of things on your own. So you don't necessarily need the associates to be yeah. a, a successful business person. Is that it?
Um, I did an internship with BioXL Therapeutics. <clears throat> this is me. I'm Eliana Markowitz. I'm a senior at Jonathan Law High School. I'm planning on attending Tulane University in the spring, and I'm studying abroad at John Cabot University in Rome, Italy in the fall. I am planning on majoring in communications, and I hope to go to law school and eventually become a child advocate attorney. Where did I intern? BioXL Therapeutics. They're a medical sales company. They create, like they manufacture medicines, and then they also have a marketing team that's just devoted to selling them. I was more in like the marketing aspect of it. I was not really with the scientists. These were the two people that I mainly dealt with. The senior director of communications is Eric. He studied communications at American University, and he also got his master's in communications there as well. He's a very smart person. And this is also, oh, this is also very, very, they're very smart people. He's the CEO and founder of the company. His name is Vimmel. And he, um, what's it called? He like would be away a lot, but he would let me sit in his office when he was away on trips and stuff like that. So that was just like funny that I got to sit in the CEO's office when I worked there. Site experience. So I liked the fact that this office was in New Haven because I've always wanted to work in a city. I really wanted to work in New York City when I grow up and New Haven was not like New York City but a fraction of it kind of. So I liked that. Um, I really liked Eric. He was super friendly and he had knew my mom so it was very like I knew him. I wasn't really nervous to meet him. And I also wanted to know what it was like to work with communications in an office setting. I obviously see myself being an attorney, but like if I were to end up like um, in like a standard office job, like kind of how communications would work in that type of job as well. Um, this is just more about BioXL. They're a pharmaceutical company. They manufacture and market new innovative drugs. There are only 120 people working at three locations. So the kind of like the mother location is Inveni A, Artificial Intelligence AI. BioXL was just one like New Haven office of it. Um, this is like what I learned about a lot. It's the drug that they like just came out with called Igalmi. It treats all types of stress disorders such as uh, PTSD, anxiety, and Alzheimer's. This is a chart that I made when I was like working on a presentation for the marketing team. So it has like agitation you have here, psychosis, and it kind of explains basically the targets are like places in your brain that like would contribute to these type of disorders. So like for agitation or for for dementia, there's 46 targets. Like, so there's 46 different like parts of your brain that you have to research to understand dementia because they all contribute to it. And there's 41 drugs on the market that are devoted to it. And we are one of those 41 drugs that are devoted to treating the agitation that comes with dementia. So the way that the drug works is like, if you have this very violent episode, like. If you, like some people with dementia, like they get, they, they'll be okay and then they like won't be, like they'll have one of those episodes where they'll be like very frustrated, very upset, like this kind of, it's non-sedative, but it works like a Listerine strip that you put on your tongue and it kind of immediately like activates like your nervous system and like calms you down in a non-sedative way. Um, the marketing team had a lot of, like when this drug came out and was FDA approved in January, so it's like a very, very new drug. I don't even think it's on, it's not even technically on the market yet. It just got added to like, the, like you can like trade stocks in it. Um, but like we were, so I was working for the marketing team that like basically like they had to learn about the drug in order to sell it. So when we were like explaining to them how the drug works, they let me use these. Like this is what they use in their shows, so they let me like take a couple home with me. This is what it looks like. It says they got me. They have 180 milligrams, 120 milligrams here, and these there's nothing in here. But if you were to tear it open, it's just literally like a listerine strip. They also gave me placebos. I could open these and it would be like a listerine strip, but they asked if I could try to keep them closed so that they could use them. But yeah, that's what. 
that. So my expectations, I thought because I was doing communications that I was going to be doing a lot of writing. I was really hoping to be like helping with press releases and like all types of media stuff like that, which I wasn't really doing until the end because it wasn't until the end that there was something to write about. There was like a super successful clinical trial that we were like hoping to get the story in like medical journals and science notebooks and stuff like that that are published online. So that kind of happened like just last week. But before that, there wasn't really... Other than it got FDA approved, but that was in January, there wasn't really much to like write about. So I also thought it was going to be a super busy, like bustling office, and it wasn't because when I got there, a lot of people had just come back from a launch party and they got COVID. So there was like six people there out of like an office that holds like easily 300 people. There was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe 12 on a good day. Um... I was also, so what like surprised me more than anything is that like I was got really, really interested in Igami like that. I got really interested in what it did and like how it helped people because when I was reading the stories of like these people with like autism who had really bad violent episodes, I would like read these stories of how like it helped them a lot. Like they were able to return to their family after being, having to like be taken to like someplace cause their family couldn't deal with them. And they were just too like their outbreaks, they were too stressed to even be taken care of by their parents. And after like taking these drugs, like they could come home. And that was like very inspiring to me. I didn't think I'd be that into it. So what did I do at first? Very, very simple things. I ordered lunch and I set up lunch. And I waited downstairs for the person to come with like sandwiches from the deli and I would put them out. I would make that salad. I'd make everything pretty. I would clean it up after. Um, they loved it though. They, I was probably, you know, their favorite in the office for giving them food. Um, I did training modules because anyone, even an intern, has to complete like a lot because it's medical and because it's customer service. Like you can't go into it without any type of training because it's medical marketing. So like you... I had to do all these like modules that talk about ethics in the medical field. That's where I learned a lot. It took like um, like a week and a half to complete everything in total. I had to do healthcare compliance, like two modules, and then interactions with healthcare professionals as well. So I like learned a lot of information there about like what type of thing, what type of there's like very very specific regulations on what type of questions you can ask healthcare professionals. You're not like I learned you're not allowed to like. If you're at a medical conference and you don't think that, and you think someone's like marketing your like your drug in an incorrect way, you're not allowed to say anything there. Like you have to go to their team. Like it's very, very, very regulated on what you can and cannot say. So I guess they like wanted me to do that just in case some healthcare professional came in and I said something I wasn't supposed to say. And then later, when the whole when the successful clinical trial was released, we were doing. I was doing a lot of powerpoints. Like I was just making presentations. Uh, for the marketing team about like just kind of like what a gall me is so I had to know what it did so that I can make the presentation I had to do a lot of research because I didn't know anything about this drug so I had to learn all about it um, I feel like I could be on their marketing team by now and I really want to like I was writing a couple drafts on my own for articles that I hoped that they could cite in the journals but I'm not sure if they're going to so my accomplishments is like these are just a couple pictures from the presentations that I made. Um, I like found a bunch of pictures. I like, you know, the and all these presentations were used when the uh, like scientists were presenting what their drug was to the marketing team. They would use some slides from the things that I put together. The challenge was the fact that I was an intern. <laughs> Because by the end of it, I really wanted to do more. Like, I really wanted to write those articles. I really wanted to, like, they, like, the one, tr like, the trial that I was, like, alluding to about the boy with autism that, like, um, he was able to go home after not being able to be with his family. Like, after taking a gummy for, like, two months, he was able to return home. We were going to be interviewed by the New Haven Register for that. And I really, really wanted to, like, write something for it that they could use. But they like didn't really want me to do that because it, that like that was Eric's job and like I don't have a degree so it just kind of I I really wanted to do it but I just like wasn't there yet and that was tough for me because I you know I want to do everything so I learned time management um, I kind of learned conference planning I feel like I could like put together a conference if they asked me to because I knew all the details 
Um, I became, I feel like my PowerPoint development and my email writing became very professional because I was writing a lot of emails to people. I feel like I could do better research. Um, I feel like I became much better at communicating with adults because I had to talk to a lot of adults and managing just kind of all different types of responsibilities no matter what they threw at me. I like tried to take it on and patience. I'm not a very patient person, but I had to be. <laughs> And this will aid my future plans because I feel like my writing has gained a sense of professionalism, which will help me like when I'm in college doing research essays and writing and then eventually getting my communications degree. I feel like I just am a better writer. <laughs> These are my immediate future plans. Although I will not be working for a summer job at BioXL, I could continue my internship there if I wanted to over the summer, but I'm just going to work a lot at my job, Fratelli's. These are some pictures from Fratelli's. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> I make a mean espresso at Fratelli's. Um, yeah. So, obviously going to communications, did you learn anything about the importance of the dialogue of like doctors between marketing professionals? Yes, so a lot of healthcare professionals and like doctors need to be cited for like everything. Just be, it's so like, like you cannot really say anything. Although like we manufacture the drug, we, there's a lot of things that we just could not say about the drug. Like it had to come from a doctor. It had to come from a healthcare professional because we're not, sorry, we're not healthcare professionals at the end of the day. So a lot of, like if you're gonna call a drug effective, you need to get that from a doctor who has like clinical trials that he can say like that prescribe this drug and you can't bring in, what's difficult is that you can't really bring in a doctor who like is connected to or prescribes your drug a lot because then it could be seen as bias. So there's a lot of like, a lot of regulation, but a, like communication from doctors specifically is like very, very important, especially for marketing the drug too. I feel like um, I feel like what I learned in the classroom and what I learned in the office is, is like very congruent for me because I feel like I had to learn how to do a lot of presentations in school. I had to learn how to be social, like very social. I had to learn how to talk to teachers. And then I used that to learn how to talk to adults at work and to learn how to make presentations and to write emails. Like I had to learn how to write professional emails or more professional emails when I got to school. And like then I had to like use that when I got to work, but then I also feel like if I were to come, when I go back to college, I'll use what I learned, like even more professional writing back at college to talk to people, you know what I mean? To talk to my professors sound even more professional, so it kind of bounces back in that yeah. sense. Yeah, anything else? It's not really a question, well I will have a question for you. Mm -hmm. First it's a comment. I, I'm sorry I didn't see some of you, but Chad and, and your excitement and enthusiasm for what you did, I think it's <laughs> awesome, really. Okay. And it's, I'm jealous thinking about my own kids not having that opportunity to do that at their high school. Mm. Um, and I'm glad you guys took the, took the opportunity to do it. Thank you. And Mr. Kalenich wanted to know if we should invest in, <laughs> should we invest in this? He has some extra cash. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lucky trader, yeah. I don't really want to be reported to <laughs> the, um, so to the federal. Insider stuff, I can't really say anything as I'm being broadcasted on <laughs> to YouTube. Turn the cameras off. <laughs> but yeah. Quick kind of follow up to that. You said you wanted to be a lawyer. Is that your yeah. ultimate goal? Do you think medical law or anything in that field is something that you're interested in now or is it? Um, I'm not, I mean, maybe just because I find this so interesting, but I feel like I could find anything. I feel like I want to be a child advocate attorney and I feel like although I find this interesting, I'm going to find like working with kids more interesting. So. Thank you, Eliana. Thank you.
So I'm Emma, and I interned in Miss Hubble's kindergarten class at Calf Pen Meadow. This is me at prom with a lobster bib on, which I supplied, and that's the school that I'm working at. And I'll be attending the College of Charleston next year in the fall as an elementary education major. Because of this, I decided to intern in a kindergarten classroom at Calf Pen. My site supervisor is Alicia Hubble, who has been a kindergarten teacher for almost a decade, and in previous years, she taught my brother and sister in her kindergarten classes, who are now in second and fifth grade. So I chose this site because I always knew that I wanted to work with kids, but I didn't know exactly how. So I figured an elementary environment would be a good place to intern in order to really get the feel of different school aspects and to see if this is a place that I might want to work. I ended up in Miss Hubble's room because she taught two of my siblings, and my mom is in love with her teaching styles. So she told me, if you want to learn how to be a teacher, you have to learn from Alicia Hubble. And this was us watercoloring after the incident in Texas. We had them color with watercolors, and then we took pictures of them and sent them to their parents to tell them that they loved them. And this was from Spanish class. It was the Hungry Hungry Caterpillar, but in Spanish. And they had to color in the different, you know, foods and such. So the business in my site was Capen Meadow Elementary School. Ms. Whitaker, the principal, says, as a community, we strive to foster meaningful relationships and build a safe, supportive environment that develops lifelong learners who care and think deeply about their world. So this is from our field trip to the Maritime Aquarium where they're petting the stingrays. This is a picture from our calming corner. So if the kids feel like they're a little overwhelmed, they can go and play with some like stress relief toys. This is my friend Camilla. And this was during indoor recess because it was too hot outside. Mm -hmm. And Will, Idine, and Leah built this massive wooden block tower they were very proud of. So my prior expectations, I was really nervous that I was going to hate it because I babysit a lot and some kids make you question if you're going into the right field when picking elementary education. But making a connection with the kids is crucial and I definitely nailed that part because I have 13 new best friends and I could not be happier with my choice of internship. I thought I might be helping lesson plan, helping the kids read and write, aiding in math problems, etc. But it is a lot more than just that. And these are some pictures that were drawn for me. So my responsibilities and accomplishments. So on the day-to-day, -day, I'm essentially a co-teacher with Mrs. Hubble. We both like read stories aloud, help kids read, write, um, math, spelling, etc. We're also both on behavior duty 24-7 because these kids are absolutely crazy. Um, there's, <laughs> they're never focused or on task. It's, it's yeah, it's literally played back well. Um, that's what Ms. Hubble said to me on my first day. She said it's like playing whack-a-mole, and that is the truest statement I have ever heard. You finally get one kid settled, and the next one is up and running. It's ridiculous. Um, there's never a dull moment, and I'll help Ms. Hubble out by making copies, cleaning up messes, or diverting a child from asking her a question when there are already three children trying to ask her a question all at the same time. My biggest accomplishment is getting my friend Will to, to read Chicka Chicka Boom Boom all by himself. Almost. Almost. We're really close. Um, but he, whenever we did independent reading, he always, he had this like earth book he was obsessed with. And it's not a kindergarten level, probably middle school level. It's got tons of words, super small. He can't read them. So he would spend the entire independent reading time sprawled out on the floor complaining that he couldn't read the words. And I was like, okay, let's try an easier book. He never wanted to. So Miss Hubble made that book disappear from his book box. And so then we decided to read Chicka Chicka Boom Boom together. And at first it was hard because he wanted to read his earth book and he was very concerned about where the earth book was. But when we finally got past all that, you know, we got to Chicka Chicka Boom Boom and that's where we are. So the challenges I faced, well, the biggest challenge was definitely a lack of time because after my first day of interning, Mrs. Hubble got COVID. And so I essentially had to miss a week of class time. And then I went to Florida for senior nationals, which cut me down in more days. And then I got strep throat. Um, and then track meets and all that. I missed a lot of days. But on top of all that, I had to leave on one at 1 o'clock every day due to track. But regardless, I definitely have spent a lot of time with these children. Another huge challenge we're facing are behavioral issues. Every five seconds, I'm asking another child to sit in their seat or to stop talking. 
and I never leave that school without a headache, but it's worth it because they're super cute. And that's more watercoloring, and that's me at the end of the day. <laughs> so my skills developed and future career help. I'd already considered myself a patient person, but my patient levels have definitely increased due to this experience. I've also learned tons of discipline techniques. I think being in a kindergarten classroom has taught me that I do not want to be a kindergarten teacher, but maybe something more specialized like a speech pathologist. I don't think I could handle being in charge of that many children by myself, and I have no idea how Mrs. Hubble does it. I honestly praise her for what she does and how well she does it. This is another picture of our tower because he was just so excited about it. Thanks for listening. Questions? Yes. My question was going to be, we answered at the end, where it was going to be, you know, a lot of times in internships you experience something that you were like, it was a great experience, but I know I can check this off the list. So right. So like kindergarten teachers out. Yeah, um, definitely. But it seems like you still think education is the path regardless. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I absolutely love the kids I'm working with. I just feel like being, like, the one in charge of all the kids would be way too much because even, like, co-teaching with Miss Hubble, it's way too much for me. Even with only 13 kids, it's still such a hassle to get everyone doing something. So I think if I had like one or two kids to work with, it'd be much easier. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Were there any interesting technology issues that occurred during your internship? You know, not that I can recall. Sorry to say. Yes. Any interesting interactions with students? Um, definitely. Um, when I got back from Florida, I walked into the classroom and Ben, one of the little kids, came up to me and said, you look like you were born in Africa. <laughs> and I was like, okay, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> got it. I think he was just referring to my tan, um, but they don't really know social no cues. Filter. Yeah, no filter. No filter at all. It's like, okay, I'll take it as a compliment. Also, we had a lot of chocolate milk spills. Oh. Mm, yeah. It's everything. It's crazy. Anything else? Did you have any preparation to any of like child development classes or anything like that here that would have prepared you for this? All three of them. All three, all three of the classes, yes. I took them all. Great. Yes. You ever think about high school? Teaching high school? I have. But I just feel like it's not the same experience because, you know, the little kids will say stuff to you and it just makes you just makes you think they got di their minds work differently. Makes you pull your hair off. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. But again, I wouldn't want to be like the main classroom teacher. I definitely learned that. Thank you.